Hey, it's Albert Orange, and welcome to the season premiere of Pod by Orange, season four, episode 76. Thank you for joining me on this weird, crazy, mentally ill ride. Happy 2024. Everyone, season 4, 2024, what's going on? I'm recording this January 4th. My voice just cracked. My first voice crack of the year. Probably more like second or third. But, hey, first voice crack, 2024 for the podcast. I'm, I'm, on, a, I'm on a great start right now. Alright? I... I think this episode might be a little short. It might be like 45 minutes-ish. Just because I, I I plan to start at at 5.30. It's 5.44 right now. The reason, the reason it might only be 45 minutes long is because I, I want to see uh, a, an episode of M.A.S.H. that's coming up. I don't know which one it is, but I just want to watch MASH. And I'm already going to be missing out on one episode because they do they do two hours of it on MeTV. And it starts at 6 and it ends at 8. So it's 5.45 right now. If so if I do 45 minutes of the podcast, then that's going to last all the way till 6.30. So I'm going to be missing one episode of MASH. So I want to catch the the second episode that they do, and then I want after that I want to catch some Seinfeld, but that's over at another channel. And so, anyways, I sound crazy right now. I'm just saying I want to watch Mash, so I I'm giving myself this slot, this window, where yes, I'll miss one episode of Mash, but I'll at least I'll watch one, and then I still got you know two episodes of Seinfeld. To watch on, on uh, on the television. Anyways, I am watching Me TV right now. It's it's on Adam Twelve, but I think I ought to change the channel just because I don't really, I can't really tell what's going on, with this episode in particular of Adam Twelve, and I think I'd rather just change it to PBS, kind of like what I've been doing these past few days. Um, court blocks Argentina labor law changes, okay, uh, that's the BBC news, the BBC news, yeah, that, I'm not gonna get anything happy on there, how about PBS Kids, Odd Squad, yeah, I don't, I don't care about Odd Squad, as far as I'm concerned, all of those kids can just go screw themselves, I'm sorry, that was really insensitive. Happy 2024, everyone. Oh, man. I already know what this what this episode is going to be titled. I already know because it's also the, the new motto that I'm going by this 2024. It's, um, it's, what is it? You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. That's going to be my new motto this year, okay? I don't care if it sounds corny or if it sounds like, you know, some sort of alpha male sigma quote that you would see on Instagram, okay? But you get out what you put in. What does that mean uh, for me, for you, for the world? I, well, I don't know what it means for you. But for me, the reason why I like this quote so much and, and the reason why I'm going to stick with it, I wasn't planning on on doing any new year's resolutions, okay? Because I don't I don't really do that stuff. However, I have noticed that anytime the new year comes around, I I don't plan for new year's resolutions, but then eventually like 3 days into the new year, I start going, "Well, I I could do this." So so that's kind of what happened this year. I kind of I was laying in bed one night trying to fall asleep and I thought, hey, you know, you get out what you put in. That's a quote that just popped into my head. 
And I really liked it. I really liked it. Like, I really liked it. I really liked... And the word effort. You know? Effort and you get out what you put in. As I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Bless me. Um, thank me. Anyways... I, I just, I really like the word effort and the word, uh, or the phrase, you get out what you put in. And I realize, like, this could apply to my podcast, you know? You get out what you put in. What am I putting in to this podcast? What am I getting out of it? What, what do I want to achieve with this podcast? What do I, where do I want to go with it? I feel like... With this podcast, I feel like it it could do with some evolution. I think this podcast has been relatively... Uh, uh, relatively might not be the right word. Um, for the most part, it's been stagnant, you know? It's been the same thing over and over, you know? I'm not trying to put down my podcast... I I like my podcast. I like every single episode that I do. I crack myself up unironically. I don't know if I if I have said this before. Whenever I listen back to a recording of me just talking, I apologize for my squeaky rocking chair. I I crack myself up because of the stupid stuff that I say, the stupid jokes that I crack. The, the quips, the, the, I don't know, just whatever dumb things that I say. I always crack myself up. And, but that's pretty much about it. So even though I enjoy my podcast, I, I kind of want to see where to go with it. Like, what I can do with it. Where it can go, what it can be, man. I, this podcast hasn't hit his, its prime. Okay, just like Gino, just like Gino Smith on the Seattle Seahawks, he himself says that he hasn't hit his prime, and I believe that. Okay, so if Gino, being the Gino that he is, hasn't hit his prime, oh my goodness, I mean, what is in store for us, Seattle Seahawks fans? That's kind of what I think of this podcast. What is in store for this podcast in the future? What what will it look like five years in the future? You know? So I'm just doing a bunch of soul searching right now. I, I haven't figured out the answers to those yet. But I figured this. If I live by this motto... You get out what you put in. I figured that if I put in a little extra effort into creating this podcast, into, I don't even know, uh, maybe, maybe doing some extra stuff with this podcast, if I just do a little bit more, or not necessarily more, it just, I don't know, just... Put in the ex the extra effort. Put in the extra mile. I know that might not make sense to you. Because you don't own a podcast. If you owned a podcast, you wouldn't be listening to me. But, um, it makes sense to me. So, what I'm going to do these upcoming weeks is I'm going to soul search... And I'm going to brainstorm, I'm going to try to brainstorm anyway, what I can do with this podcast, where can it go, what what my vision is, what the big picture looks like for this podcast. You know, uh, one year down the line, two years, five years down the line, how many episodes, what am I going to be doing, what is this podcast going to look like? And so I'm going to start... I'm going to start um, being a little bit more thoughtful when it comes to this podcast. 
And who knows? Who knows where it can go? But you get out what you put in. I'm not going to say that the past three years I haven't put any effort into this podcast. I'm not going to say that because I have. But did I give enough effort into it? I don't think so. I want to live by that this year. This isn't me trying to like like going going all, you know, sigma alpha male grind on you. But it's me just kind of just kind of like challenging myself. I said for the longest time that I want to go a full year doing this podcast week by week every single week and I said that last year and I didn't end up doing that but who knows maybe this year could be different maybe this year if I just if I just put in a little effort maybe I can maybe I can get out um, some a little bit more motivation a little bit more um, fulfillment out of it. I don't know. I might have no idea what I'm talking about, but it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. And I'm just, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna follow my intuition. And we'll see where it goes, man. This podcast might look entirely different by, by year's end. Like that, that is on the table. That is on the table. This audio-only show might turn into uh, like a like a like a video-only. Uh, I don't know uh, a thing where I where I give interviews to little children. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like that thing that Joaquin Phoenix does in that one movie. You ever see that? Come on, come on. With, um... Well, I don't know the kid's name, but... It's Joaquin Phoenix. And he's a podcaster. And he basically interviews all of these kids. Um, it's actually a good movie. I, I, I enjoyed it. So, it could be that. It could be something entirely different. Who knows? This podcast could go on Rumble. You know, screw YouTube with all of its rules, regulations, and demonetizations. Maybe it could go on Rumble. Right where right where I ought to be. Anyways, I might have just ranted for like 13 minutes about absolutely nothing that you know, didn't even make sense to you, but I don't care. I don't care. Because I am free to do whatever the heck I want. It's my show. And I don't know, maybe you have suggestions on what you want to see from this show. What do you want to see from this show? What do you think? I've been thinking about doing some interviews on the show. I, I don't know. Who, who the heck would I interview, though? That's the question. It's got to be a good, spicy story. Anyways, and now I'm just, now I'm just uh, you know, rambling on. Anyways, I hope your new year is going well, 2024. We are four days in. Actually, by the time you listen to this, it's going to be six days in. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to schedule this podcast episode. Episode 76, the season 4 premiere of Pod by Orange. Um, and episode 76 is going to drop on March, March 6th, January 6th, okay? January 6th, of course, the day when we stand up and we celebrate, celebrate our God-given right to eat Rosca de Reyes. 
It's uh, Three Kings Day, of course. January 6th, the Epiphany, I think is what it's called. I, I've never heard it uh, be called that. Epiphany. What the heck does Epiphany mean? I've never... Uh, January 6th, to me, was always just January 6th, okay? It meant we get a cake... Uh, not not a cake, but like a, a... Like this bread that's like formed in a, in a ring from this bakery. And it's got a bunch of plastic baby Jesuses inside. And that's what January 6th meant, and also, you know, storming the Capitol, of, of course, of course. You know, why wouldn't it be? And I've never heard it be called Epiphany before. I don't know what that means. I'm trying to look it up. I want to look it up. I'm just going to connect my my phone to my computer using, using the... Uh, personal hotspot although I don't think it's working oh maybe it is maybe I'm able to okay epiphany epiphany as a jigsaw puzzle piece falls onto the floor I'm still working on this by the way I'm like I'm like halfway done just about halfway done with this a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle Anyways, I'll, I'll talk about that a little more later. Um, I'm sorry if, I, if if this chair is too squeaky. I'll, I'll have to go back in the recording to see how bad it is, but... You, you hear that? It's just... It, I hate it. I hate chairs that just make too much sound. Epiphany. The manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles... As represented by the Magi, Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12. Um, the festival commemorating the Epiphany on January 6th. A manifestation of a divine or supernatural being, a moment of sudden revelation or insight. Okay, the, yeah, the last one is what I thought an Epiphany was. But... January 6th, I'd never, n never in my life had I heard January 6th be referred to as Epiphany. It always just was January 6th to me. So, I I don't know what that's about. Is, is it a woke term? Is that what it is? Is the Catholic Church going woke? Is that what it is? Epiphany sounds like it could be... Like, if the Catholics went woke, that's that sounds like a woke Catholic term that, that the Catholic Church would make up, epiphany. Although, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just being a dummy right now. Anyways, I hope you're all having a good day whenever you're listening to this. If it's January 6th, if it's... If it's, um, I don't know, February 26th, uh, July the 5th, okay, day after Independence Day, you're cleaning up all the firework debris in your backyard, you know, because you lit the sky on fire. I don't know. Whenever you're listening to this, I hope you're having a good day, even if it's like, like 50 years from now, you know? You're listening to this uh, January 2074, okay? And the, the last of the colonies have been conquered and the, the artificial intelligence race has closed in on the state of Florida and the fighting continues. And the nuclear codes are nowhere to be found, and um, the the artificially created uh, uh, canines that were grown in a lab, well, those guys turned into cyborgs, and now they're killing everyone. And now, now you don't know what to do. You are hiding in a bunker with your 
um, artificial intelligent wife uh, who's actually a robot and and you're you're in a bunker and you don't know what to do so you're just hiding out uh, your last days because they're, they're gonna they're gonna hunt you down they're gonna hunt you down because you worked in an Amazon facility and so they're they're looking for you they're looking for you you were on a watch list you are on a, you are on a blacklist actually and you're on, you're on a ba- blacklist with your uh, AI robot wife and your uh, six adopted children who are all from Fiji for some reason and you're in a bunker in some uh, some lady's house um, in a basement uh, the lady is um, has been uh, classified as an essential worker and she is hiding you because she knew you um, since you were a little boy uh, back when the when the um, when the when the state was at its peak okay and but now the state has fallen a couple of coup d'etats and you know a bunch of other chaos along the way um, Donald Trump came back to life and then he died again and then um, and then Sleepy Joe finally died just yesterday okay keep in mind this is the year 2074 and you're in a bunker and you just decide to live out the last days of your life in the bunker and you just decide to just go on YouTube um, you had to use a VPN because the state wouldn't allow um, such websites as YouTube to be uh, used uh, within the territory of, of your residence so you have to use a VPN uh, which is owned, it's owned by Joe Rogan, who who is the owner of a corporation, in um, located in the in the Grand Army of the uh, Canadian Empire, and <laughs> and uh, I'm going crazy, <laughs> and uh, and. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about this. I'm I'm sorry about all of this. And you use a VPN to look at YouTube videos and this podcast pops up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you just decide, hey, why not? <laughs> I have nothing to live for. All my children can eat my my flesh off my off of the um the metal bones that I had surgically replaced um, with the uh, with the AI robot doctors who all graduated <laughs> who all graduated from why is everything AI in this scenario who all graduated from from the um, the super university of of Maryland or whatever, I don't know, and, you know, you, you have metal bones for some reason, and that your children are starving, your six starving Samoan children, or, your, or Fiji children, whatever I said, uh, but you just decide to click on this podcast to um, enjoy the last hour of your life, because you have nothing else to live for, and... Regardless of that, I hope you're having a good day. So, I, I really do. I really do. It, it, if, if the world is falling apart all around you, I still hope that you're having a good day. Even though you're probably not. Okay? Even if you are like, man, my wife divorced me because she left... She left me for uh, some some AI robot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, um, you know, I, I still hope that you're having a good day. I still hope that you can 
that you're able to find the good in in this thing that we call life this um this ever this ever oscillating volatile chaos that we call life here on earth always try to have a good day always try to find the good in every single day you know even if the day is just boring a boring day i would say is in in some ways it's better than a bad day um, a bad day will sure kick up your adrenaline. It will stress you out. It'll make you feel a bunch of things, you know, anxiety, grief, uh, misery. A boring day, however, a boring day just, it sort of signifies um, stability, right? It sort of si uh, signifies, like, like, nothing is changing, so if everything is good overall, then everything is good, right? However, if it's a boring day in, like, the medieval times, you know, back when feudalism was still a thing and, and you are but a serf, then, you know, maybe the day might be boring, but uh, it still might be really, really crappy. You know, just overall. So, that's gotta suck. Um, oh, by the way, yeah, feudalism is a thing back in that scenario that I that I said with the, you know, with the Joe Rogan VPN company and the Amazon workers being hunted down. I have nothing against people who work for Amazon. Um... But I just don't like Amazon. I, I just don't think I'll ever use that website ever again. I really regret giving out my information to that company, you know? It just doesn't seem right to me. It just... It just doesn't... It, 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 I, I don't like giving any information to anybody. At, at all. Ever. You know, I went to a doctor's appointment today. I had to wake up at 8. Because I didn't want to be late. And then I was still like... I still only showed up like 5 minutes early. To the appointment. Uh, I guess you had to like show up... 15 minutes early. Or else the doctor is just going to be late. For your appointment. Which is what happened. Um, I, I ended up waiting like half an hour in the, um, in the room where I was supposed to have the appointment, just all alone, just looking around the room. Um, anyways, I'm having this, uh, I, I'm checking in, I'm checking in at the reception at the, at the doctors and, you know, I go to the lady, hey, I have an appointment. She says, all right, uh, name, date of birth. I, I, I give her that. That I'm, like, fine with. Um, and then she's, she goes, uh, she goes, uh, hey, you know, you, your insurance, it's still with this. I say, yeah, yeah. And then she goes, all right, can you have me verify your, your address, please? And it's just, it's out in the open, right? Like, people can hear if they really listened they could hear not only her asking that question, but, like, they could potentially hear my response. And, but what am I going to do? I mean, I don't know. I could show her my ID, but then again, it's like, there are security cameras in there, and I don't want, I don't want anybody looking at the security feeds to, like, you know, zoom in on my ID or whatnot. So, I just, I mean, what could I do? I, I, I told her. I told her my address. And, and I, you know, made sure that to, to keep my voice relatively low. Um, and then it was over, just like that. But I was still, I still felt uncomfortable. Luckily, though, like, I'm not mad at the lady. 
because, um, A, she was, <laughs> she was, um, she was like, she was attractive, you know, so, um, I, you know, I, I give her that pass, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, you know, behave the same way if, if I didn't find her attractive, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that she gets a pass, okay, anyways, um, but, but I understand, like, she's just doing her job, right, um, even if it's just, you know, if it's, like, the weirdest question, that, like, why do you need to verify my address, I, I, I gave you my, my, my birthday and my, my full name, you know, I don't need to give you my address, it, it should be on file, what does it matter where I live, I mean, shouldn't I be treated anyhow, or maybe it's like a, like a district thing, like, like, oh, you're not a resident in here in this particular city, so we can't treat you, you have to go to the nearest spot where your residence is, or, or something, I don't get it, um, anyways, I, I really hope you're all having a good day, um, so am I, it's just, I, I just, I'd rather not give out my address in front of a bunch of people, um, anyways, so, especially now that I'm a, I'm a celebrity on YouTube, you know, I'm, not to brag, but, <laughs> um, why don't you, uh, why don't you look at the views I've been getting on my, on my shorts, <laughs> okay, my YouTube shorts, alright, I've, um, again, I, I don't want to brag, but, um, I've been, um, I've been racking up a couple numbers, okay, a couple of figures, um, my subscriber count shot up thanks to the shorts that I've uploaded over the weekend. And see, this is what I'm talking about. You put, you, you get out what you put in. I put in three hours of my time to, to making like, like two of the shorts for the, for the Lions, uh, the Lions game against, um, against the Cowboys. And I put in, I put in some effort into that. And look, look where it got me. I mean, I mean, the, the, I think the, the second one that I put out for that, it got like 13,000 views. Um, I think it got like 8,000 views in the first day or something. And then slowly over the week, it just built up to 13,000. Yeah, I think right now it's, it's currently at 13,000. It might climb up to, to more than that. Uh, by tomorrow, uh, by Saturday, by the time you listen to this, um, which is just crazy, it's crazy, and as a result, I, I got like, what, like, m like, my subscriber count, ever since I, I started uploading shorts onto the channel, um, for the, uh, you know, just clips out of, um, uh, you know, a very edited down clips of, of the fourth quarter commentaries that I've been doing. Ever since I've been uploading those shorts, uh, I think my subscriber count went from like six subscribers all the way up to 45. Which is crazy because it was 30. It was like 35 yesterday. And today it climbed up to 45, which is just insane. So thank you to everyone who, who subscribed, who who liked all all of the shorts and stuff, who liked my, my regular videos and my podcast and the fourth quarter commentaries, that really means a lot. It means that people are actually paying attention and that my, my need for attention is being fulfilled. So thank you so much for that. But seriously, like, that's awesome. Like, the fact that people would subscribe um, is just, it's just really, really awesome. I, I really appreciate it. Um, that being said, I really hope that 
those accounts that subscribe to me aren't bots. If if they were, if, if they did somehow turn out to be bots, I would be very, very upset. That's kind of what happened with like my Instagram account that I barely post on um, anymore. Is any, any time a follower, you know, like follows the account, it's just like, it's, it just like 50% of the time it turns out to be a bot, which is just sad. <laughs> so I just hope that's not the case with YouTube. It, with YouTube, it seems fine because people are also commenting and, um, mostly, mostly like just stuff about the game itself. Um, I did get like two mean comments one of which was just like i mean i didn't even understand it and then today i log on and they edited their comment like at first originally it was it was um what did they say they said 30 subscribers and then three laughing emojis you do matter and then i was like okay thanks thanks for that and then today i see i see that um it got edited the comment got edited and so now it says 30 subscribers laughing emojis you do not matter period so they changed it they they realized they went to that so okay, here's what happened from their perspective they write down this comment thinking they wrote down 30 su subscribers, uh, you do matter, or, or you do not matter, but they forget the not, right? And so, that was like a couple days ago, and maybe like a week ago or something, I, I don't know. But then today, they get on, and they realize, oh crap, I... I, I didn't I, I I said the wrong thing. I didn't I didn't put the not in there. I meant to say you do not matter. So they went back and they changed it because they wanted to be accurate with their insult or whatever you call it. Which is just mind boggling. Like why would anybody do that? It's just it, it you know it's it's kind of sad that 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 somebody would like write that to begin with but then also to like go back potentially to see if I even uh reply to them which I'm not doing I I really wanted to at at one point um especially after they changed it but I'm not going to do that because I'm not I, I, there's no point in wasting my time. Um, but they went back and they were like, oh crap, my insult didn't even come across the way I wanted it to. Let me change it. Do you realize how insane that is? That's just insane. Anyways, I am going to, uh, to, transition over to um this segment that i've been doing for a little bit for like maybe only three episodes now uh the seattle sitch everyone we're gonna talk about all things seattle sports um actually really all things uh seahawks and the kraken so yeah this is the segment of the show the seattle sitch where i talk about um, Seattle sports and, you know, what's been going on in Seattle. So, um, yeah, I hope you're all having a good day still. And, and, you know, whoever wrote that comment, like, I understand you you're trying to be mean, uh, maybe don't be mean next time. Cause like, it's, it's kind of not really affecting me as much. So... Especially since you botched it. So, 
uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. Um, yeah, d I don't know, man. D do something. Do something with your life. God. Anyways, the Seattle Sitch, everyone. Uh, the Kraken. Uh, I'm sorry for the squeaky chair. I'm sorry for the noise. Um, I wrote down some notes here. The Seattle Kraken, as of Thursday, January 4th, uh, 6.24 p.m., the Seattle Kraken are 15, 14, and 9. I assume that means 15 wins, 14 losses, and 9 draws, um, or ties, whatever you call it. They are playing the 14-19-0 Senators today. The Washington Senators at home in Seattle. They are 5th in the Pacific Division on a 5-game winning streak. They play the Senators today um, actually in 36 minutes. So I don't know if I'm going to be listening to that. Maybe I am after, our, after I watch uh, Seinfeld and stuff. Maybe I'm going to tune in. Um, to like maybe the third period or something. Um, we'll see. We'll see about that. So good luck to the Kraken uh, today. Of course, by the time you're listening to this, uh, the, the Kraken will have already played. And, you know, we'll, we'll know the, the outcome of that game um, by the time this comes out. So, but, you know, good luck to them anyways. And the Seattle Seahawks... are playing the Arizona Cardinals. I think... Ah, oh crap. Are they playing them in Arizona? Hold on. Seahawks. Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks. Ah, oh crap. Come on. Oh, no. Uh, Seattle Seahawks at, at the Cardinals. Okay. Um, it's going to be on Fox... Of course, the Seahawks off a disappointing loss. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the the the, the bang on the table. I, you know, I, I'm sorry. That was accidental. Um, the Seahawks are coming off a loss, a home loss against the Steelers, and which would have made them get a winning season. Instead, uh the the Steelers were also at eight and seven and so they got the win and so Mike Tomlin gets his I don't know what uh what is it, the the sixteenth consecutive winning season or something like that? He's never had a losing season, which is just crazy. And so I don't know what happened that game. We just couldn't tackle. We couldn't tackle, and that, that you know that was just disappointing. It was, it was a incredibly disappointing loss. So I just hope that we can bounce back and finish out the season on a high note against the Cardinals, which I guess on paper it should be fine, but like it it, it looks fine, but I don't know the the Cardinals. The Cardinals are are a bit of a wild card these days. They beat the Eagles, then they go and and who did they just beat? Uh, they beat the um. Hold on, the Cardinals. Who did they just beat? Last week. Arizona Cardinal. They. They beat yeah they beat the Eagles. They also beat the Steelers a couple weeks back. Okay, I mean they're they're four and twelve. Okay, so they beat they beat the Eagles, they beat the Steelers, they beat the um. Who else did they beat? I don't even know. I don't even know, but they've beaten a couple teams. They they have four wins, twelve losses. It should be doable for us, but at this point, it's like. You, you knowing how this team is, it's gonna be a close one. I just feel it. It's gonna be a close one. Somebody is gonna mess up. 
at some point. It's just not going to go... It's going to be an ugly win if if it's a win at all. It actually, is, it, it's, I, I feel like an ugly game is about to come up. You know, I'd like to have a little bit more faith in my team, but I, that's just how I feel right now. Uh, but anyways, good luck to the to the Seahawks. Oh, also, also, the a headline just came out today, or you know, recently at least. Uh, Bobby Wagner is says he wants to keep playing into 2024 he said there's no might when he said he said when asked if he might want to play in 2024 adding 100% when again asked about playing for the next season he said 100% he's playing next season hopefully we can get a deal with him um uh, who what kind of Seahawks fan doesn't want Bobby Wagner around I mean, come on. Like, it's Bobby Wagner. Um, so, that's great that he that he feels like he can keep playing. Of course, he is older. But, you know, if if Bobby Wagner is able to play, then hey, I, I feel like he should, he should, um, he ought to play. Um, at least one more year. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this Seattle Sitch and for episode 76 of the show. Again, thank you for listening. I hope you're having a great start to your new year. And, um, yeah, effort. You get out what you put in. That's going to be the motto for uh, for this year, for uh, for me anyways. Feel free to take it um, as your motto. It's not too late. It's not too late. Just because, just because it's January 6th or January 7th or whenever you're listening to this, um, just because we're all a few days into the new year doesn't mean that um, that, that, you know, it's too late to like, you know, try to, try to make it better. If you already failed at your new year's resolution, try again. Okay. Do it for me. Okay. Do it for you. And, um, yeah, I hope you're all, uh, uh, well, and yeah, I'm going to end this. Okay. Till the next one. Take care. Go Hawks.